Bizkaya Arena in Bilbao, Spain, home today to FIBA World Cup Basketball, the number one ranked team in the world, Team USA taking on Finland. Kevin Connors, Fran Fraschilla, delighted to be with you. This is the opener, Fran, of a two-week run for USA Basketball. And they're in pool play, Kevin, which means think of it as a microcosm of the regular season. Play well in pool play, get some momentum, get ready for the round of 16 a week from now. Team USA, obviously, the heavy, heavy favorites. Mike Krzyzewski, the familiar face of USA Basketball on the sidelines. He's got some unfamiliar faces to coach, but one of them is Rudy Gay with our Bob Holtzman. Rudy, you're actually the oldest player on a very young team. You were in this event four years ago, won the gold medal. You know what it takes. How would you assess where your team is right now? Well, I mean, we're getting there. I mean, uh, obviously, we had a lot of setbacks. Um, me, personally, just getting here late. Um, but, you know, we have a good group of guys, guys that are willing to go out there and play defense and work hard. So um, we're getting better every day. Any concerns tonight? No, no. Obviously, Finland's a really good team, shoots a lot of threes, but, um, you know, with our pressure and the fact that we have so many guards that can pressure the ball, um, we, should, we should be pretty good. Thanks, Rudy. Good luck. No problem. Thank you. All right, Bob, a political answer there from Rudy Gay as the U.S. prepares to take on the number 39-ranked team in the world. Fran, they are led by Pateri Kopanen. He's one of the better point guards in Europe, property of the Dallas Mavericks. He'll play this season in Russia. USA will try to get after him with defensive pressure. Eric Murphy, a name that may be familiar to U.S. basketball fans, played his college ball at Florida. Now a member of the Cleveland Cavaliers. We'll talk about him. And a surprise, maybe for some, no Derrick Rose in the starting lineup. Fran, Coach K going with Kyrie Irving at the point. Kyrie Irving has been as good as anybody on this team since the start of training camp. Lots of ways to play those guards. Derrick Rose will be a big factor. Team USA, the number one ranked team in the FIBA World Rankings, 9-0 at the 2010 FIBA World Championships. This competition has undergone a name change. It's now the FIBA World Cup of Basketball. USA riding a 54-game win streak into play dating back to 2006. That includes exhibitions and in all international competitions. They are the favorites, friend, to get out of pool play, but not necessarily the favorites in this tournament overall. Well, I think they probably are the favorite, but let's face it, Spain has been together a long time, and they will play Team USA on their home court in Madrid in a few weeks if it works out that way. There are rule differences between the American game, both the college and NBA game, and FIBA competition. One of them four 10-minute quarters, Fran, and player disqualified after the fifth foul. Exactly, and keep in mind, it's a shorter three-point line than the NBA. 22 feet, 1.75 inches. About a foot and a half shorter than what these NBA players are used to. One of the great rules in FIBA play, all international competition, you can touch the ball in the cylinder. A rule that the NBA at some point may consider adopting themselves. Anthony Davis, one of the leaders of this U.S. basketball team, a member of the 2012 Olympic gold medal winning team, but he's never played in a FIBA game. He will jump it up. If it sounds like a home court for Finland, it's because over half this arena is filled with fans of the Wolfpack. We are underway. Early touch by the U.S., so it will be uh, Finland basketball to start. Yeah, roughly 8,000 of the 15,414 packed into Biscaya Arena are rooting for the Finns. Lots of cuts, lots of ball movement. Kopanen very good off pick and roll. Early three on the way by Kopanen is short, but it's kept alive by Sean Huff. Three former college players in this Finland lineup. Huff, Sean Huff played at Valparaiso, Gerald Lee Jr. at Old Dominion. And down low, Finland on the board, the early lay-in by Gerald Lee. Good, solid, low-post player. He's a below-the-rim guy, can step away from the basket. He should have trouble defensively today. Terrific atmosphere inside this guy, Arrhenius, as Kyrie Irving is short. Whistle and a foul away from the basketball, and... Uh, that is on the big man, Anthony Davis. Actually, 
They're going to call it on Lee, so an offensive foul on Finland. Brad, how about for Team USA? What's the objective offensively in this game? Well, I think they've really, I've talked to the coaching staff, communicated with them. Ball movement side to side. I thought at times they were a little too much one on one oriented in the friendly games. Second he, effort by Kenneth Fareed. Well, this guy has done a tremendous job of doing his job, which is to rebound, play defense, make the energy plays. Now, this is a perimeter oriented Finland team. And if that's a foul on Lee, that might be number two. It is, in fact, and you can hear the partisan Finnish crowd reacting to that. Two early fouls on the Finland big. Let's watch in the post now. You see that right arm, he extends, and that's a good, easy call. And if you're Gerald Lee, you don't want to do that early in the game. But good defense by Anthony Davis. Hurry off the drive by speed, and Fareed throws it in. Watching Finland in the pre-tournament pre games, they are not very good defensively, and they don't guard the ball well, and you saw an example of that right there. Here's Lee on the drive. May have gotten away with a step, and it's tipped up and in by Sasu Salih. Salih known for his three-point shooting. Harden off the drive. Baskin will count and an opportunity at a three-point play for James Harden. And this is what James Harden does so well in the NBA. He gets himself to the rim and he gets to the foul line. He knows how to draw contact. Watch the drive and the finish. Two fouls on uh, Jan. Actually, his third foul called on Gerald Lee. So in the first two minutes and eight seconds of this game three fouls sending Gerald Lee to the bench as Harden completes the three-point play I had some good Gerald Lee stories that we were going to get in there we're going to have to save them to the second half he's from a basketball family Finland scored the first two points of this game Team USA has opened up a three-point lead three on the way by Eric Murphy and the U.S. looks to push Lobbed up hard into Davis, and he can't finish it. They'll get Kenneth Fareed with his hand in the cookie jar. One thing you've seen from Team USA from time of Memorial is they love to throw the lob. And they're trying to get Davis at the rim. That's usually a high percentage play, needless to say, but sometimes you got to put that play in your back pocket early. Three-pointer by Kopanen would have tied it up, and instead, the Manimal gobbles it up. Harden will push right to the rim, and he'll head to the free-throw line for a pair. He throws his arms into your body as well as anybody you'll see play this game. Watch what he does now. He just knows how to get mangled in there and get himself to the foul line. Now, James Harden. Coming off maybe his best year as a pro, 25.4 points per game, fifth best in the NBA, a career-high 6.1 assists this past season as a member of the Houston Rockets. And a look at Derrick Rose, who we will see, we imagine at least in the early going, France sparingly for Mike Krzyzewski. Well, I think all these guards are going to play 20 minutes a night in pool play. Team USA is going to be up big in many of these early games, and they're going to get a chance to use the entire roster most importantly is developing chemistry and cohesion on both ends. Tuka Godi in the, late, in the uh, game now for Finland as Harden bats the three-point attempt away, and it'll stay Finland basketball. Now, if you're a Big East fan, old Big East, and you remember that name, Tuka Koti, former Providence Friar, is a good, solid player for Tim Welch. Graduated about 2005. Good role player for the Friars. Open it, pulling the quick trigger over Kyrie Irving. He's the guy you can't let get going. Steph Curry missing the three. Davis skies in, but Finland comes away with it. Kopanen played 
in the 2007 Nike Hoop Summit against guys like Derrick Rose and O.J. Mayo. Goatee working on Fareed. Now Huff along the baseline. Five on the shot clock. Celine gets it off and Davis comes away with it. Brad, how about the mindset for Team USA in a game that they know they will win and rather easily? Pressure, pressure, pressure. Both ends of the floor. And then move the ball and create the great shot from the good shot. What about on the defensive end? What does Mike Krzyzewski want to see? One of the things that he talked to his team about this morning was stay aggressive, but let's not commit silly fouls. We don't, now, we don't know how each game will be officiated, how much they'll let us get away with. So let's play hard, pressure, but no silly reach-in fouls. As Celine heads to the bench, we see Temu Raniko checking into the game for the first time. He's one of the all-time greats in Finland basketball. He and Hanno Metala. Metala, a member of this team, played for Utah in the late 1990s, and Finland is keeping this game close in the early going. Eric Murphy's first two points. A Murphy, the uh, lesser high-profile signing of the Cleveland Cavaliers in the offseason, I'd say, Fran. Yeah, I saw him play with Utah in the Summer League. Cleveland picked him up. His mother played for the Finnish national team. His father, Jay, of course, an outstanding player at Boston College. Take a look here at the charge. Murphy steps in. His younger brother, Alex, will play at Florida this year, transfer from Duke. He played on the under-20 team. And maybe the best Murphy, Thomas, is only a sophomore in high school back in Rhode Island. I think he's going to transfer to prep school his last two years. Six foot ten sophomore. We see Derek Rose check into the game for Kyrie Irving and Anthony Davis to the free throw line on the blocking foul on the previous play. You know, Team USA is. The favorite in so many games, Fran, but they are entering an arena today that is in many ways hostile territory. Well, it's good for them, you know. Uh, you think back to Beijing in 2008, very first game they played in the Beijing Olympics was against China. Great atmosphere, great crowd. Not the same type of competition, no Yao Ming, but this is a good test in terms of handling the, uh, the bright lights. Good introduction to this FIBA tournament as they'll get Derrick Rose on the body, his first foul. Those are the kind of fouls that will put your opponent in the bonus and allow them to shoot free throws on the fifth foul. See, that's unnecessary right there. Brad, for those unfamiliar with the FIBA game, the international game, we've gone over the rules, but playing style, what are some of the big differences? You know, it's ironic that it's actually more physical off the ball than the NBA. They still won't let you get away with the nonsense in terms of the hand checking. This is Coy Visto. Bounce pass along the baseline, and it's last touched by Eric Murphy. It'll be USA Basketball. Now look at the head coach, Henrik Detman. Had a good run with Germany back in 2002. Yes, he did. He's been the Finnish coach twice. Of course, he's of German descent. There you see James Harden. That's his game right there. Great footwork. And another turnover. The U.S. again looking to push. Kai, uh, Steph Curry, rather, fouled in the open court. And a good foul that time by Capone. There's that foul that teams will give in the open court to stop the fast break by Pateri Capone. He'll play for Kimki this year in, in the Russian League. Team USA has so much depth, obviously. Mike Krzyzewski's going to go 10 deep. Continue to find out what his best rotations are. And, you know, we, we were together. I, I, I think at training camp he told me, we treat pool play like it's the NBA regular season, a microcosm. 
because once you get to the round of 16 then it's like the NBA playoffs in microcosm the opponents get tougher as you advance but you can't be at your best in the knockout round unless you gain some chemistry in pool play. Team USA has yet to miss a free throw. Finland has yet to go to the line as we uh, dip under four and a half minutes to play here in Bilbao, Spain. Team USA, the 17-8 lead on Finland. Kevin Connors, Brad Schiller, delighted to be with you for the start of the FIBA World Cup as Rudy Gay in the game. Whistle and a traveling violation called on Rudy Gay. Well, coverage of the FIBA Basketball World Cup continues Sunday on ESPN. Team USA taking on Turkey in a preliminary round play. USA versus Turkey, Sunday, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Turkey fortunate to escape uh, New Zealand today who led most of that game until the final three minutes. Ball away jumper by Kohi. Good solid player. Tim Welch found him because one of his former players was on the same finish team. Brought him to Providence. Cousins missing the close one and then Derek Rose as well and a whistle and a foul this time on Clay Thompson. We've seen this time and time again, Kevin. If you don't have international experience, and Clay Thompson does, he was on the under-19 World Championship team, but you have to keep your composure early in these games to figure out how the officiating will go. Another look at a missed opportunity for Team USA. And by the way, that's true of every team in this tournament. We saw some crazy officiating in that Turkey New Zealand game today. Never shocking when uh, the officials are talked about in international competitions as they get gay on uh, the reach in that time. Well, they come from all over the world and they don't necessarily know who the NBA stars are, some of these guys. Fifth team foul, and it'll send Kimo Morin into the free throw line. First attempt from the line this game for Finland. This young guy played two years at Arkansas Little Rock for Steve Shields. Plays his pro ball now for Espoon Hanka in the Chorus Liga. That is the uh, top tier league in Finland. You know what their nickname is? What's that? The Playboys. Hanka Playboys. Right. <laughs> there's a lot. I feel like there's a lot of pressure that comes along with. It. They're the Boston Celtics of the Chorus Liga. <laughs> lot to live up to. <laughs> When you're a member of the Playboys, as Finland turns the U.S. over. And then they give it right back. Harden lobs it up, and Rudy Gay, one-handed throwdown for Team USA. Don't need a lot of plays when you got guys who can make plays. Tom Thibodeau has been in charge of this USA defense since the start of training camp. So these chances, even in games you're supposed to win, Give you an opportunity to develop cohesion on a defensive end. Gody falling away, got it up over Cousins, and again, one and done for the Finns. Here's Clay Thompson, one of the two Splash Brothers, the first three for the USA. You notice James Harden has the ball in his hands. I think they cut Damon Lillard in part because they felt that Harden gives them that extra ball hand or anyway, and they went with the extra big. Another turnover, Rose is fouled on his way to the basket. A friend Rudy Gay talked about it. He said, until we get a rhythm offensively, we have to make our defense produce points. And that's one of the things the U.S. has done early on. A 10-point lead over Finland. Schiller Team USA, the start of FIBA World Cup play, a 10-point lead on Finland. This reminder later tonight, ESPN College Football presented by Hampton Hotels, 5.30 Eastern. Clemson takes on Georgia. And then at 9 Eastern, Wisconsin battles LSU. Both games available live on Watch ESPN as Derek Rose heads to the free throw line and knocks home his first attempt of the game. A look at Mike Krzyzewski and Fran. We talked about 
defense leading to offense, something the USA is emphasizing this, this go-round. Well, there's no question. They've emphasized defense for most of training camp, and I've had a couple good discussions with Coach K about the fact that they don't have to be uh, complicated offensively. These are some of the best offensive players in the world. Give them a little structure, let them play, but they can be good defensively. They can be great defensively in time. Celine missing the layup. The U.S. opens up its largest lead of the game at 12. What have you seen in the first eight minutes? You know what? The USA has defended the three-point line really well, which is something they wanted to do coming in. Cousins absorbing contact, and he'll head to the free-throw line. The physicality of Team USA is showing itself here, friend. Well, you don't see a lot of post-up play in international play, but they do have a guy in Cousins that you can definitely put it down on the block to. And that was a play that Coach K talked about in their last timeout. They were going to go inside to Cousins to try to get him going because he really can be a huge factor on this team as this team grows over the next two weeks. Now he is a fascinating story that he's even with Team USA. Two years ago, he drove Jerry Colangelo crazy when he tried out for the U.S. Olympic team, but he's really changed his game, Fran, and his perception, right? I think he has. He's done everything they've asked. He's been to uh, three training camps. He made the team, and they need him. Uh, they need bigs in this tournament. That's a travel. And they get Kimo Morin in with the uh, foot shuffle. Team USA in the midst of a 9-0 run right now. Seventh turnover of the game to start for Finland. Gay spinning into the paint. Gorgeous move and uh, the, uh, the putback that time by Cousins. And you can do that. Yes, you can. I like the fact that Rudy Gay, he's tailor-made for that power forward spot internationally. He's not Carmelo Anthony. He's not Kevin Durant. But he gives you that flexibility because he can play inside and out. And for those unfamiliar with the story, Rudy Gay was a player who was not even uh, a member of Team USA at the start of the summer, Fran, but the injury necessitating his inclusion on this team. Yeah, there's no question. He, uh, he basically asked for an invitation after Paul George got hurt and after Kevin Durant begged off the team. Yeah, yeah. They, they have Finland rattled right now. Because Finland's a much better shooting team than they're showing, but it's all Team USA's defense. Now, we were no more than three minutes into this game when uh, one of the starting bigs of Finland, Gerald Lee, picked up his third foul of the game. And it goes without saying, athletically, Finland can't match up with Team USA, but size-wise, they just simply cannot afford to lose one of their big men it's a foul trouble this early in the game. Gay tries to force it up, and it does not happen. Murphy off the drive, whistle, and a foul will be called on uh, Team USA, and so it'll send Eric Murphy back to the line to shoot a pair. This is a big tournament for Eric Murphy. He spent last year with the Chicago Bulls, Tom Thibodeau, I think late in the year with the Utah Jazz. He's got to make that Cavalier roster. That's not a given. But he can certainly play well in this tournament and drum up some interest. Mom and dad were terrific players. Of course, his dad played in the NBA for a few years before heading overseas. There's worse places to play than in Scandinavia, I can tell you that. No doubt about it. As Murphy knocks down both free throws. 1,000-point scorer for Billy Donovan at Florida. Member of the All-SEC team back in 2013, as you see Miko Poivisto head to the bench. Let me tell you something about Billy Donovan. Eric Murphy spent two months in Gainesville as Rose scores. He went back to Gainesville, and he really tried to get himself in the best shape he could. Billy Donovan, more often than not, the head coach, former head coach of his, was his workout guy. And he spent two months there before the NBA Summer League. His younger brother, Alex, will gain his eligibility this year. And uh, that's the kind of guy Billy is. He's a grinder. 
Well, he's a Rockville Center Long Island guy, and us, uh, and us Rockville good... Center guys, yeah, we stick together <laughs> as Rose knocks down the free throw to complete the three-point play, 17-point lead for Team USA. Yeah, right now, if you're, if you're Team USA, you want to maintain focus no matter what the score is. You're not playing the scoreboard. You're playing yourself, basically, because they must continue to improve in pool play. Under 10 on the shot clock. Three on the way by Hano Metal and no, but the second effort by Murphy. And we've got a whistle on the floor, and we're looking for uh, clarification from the officials. After the Murphy basket cut the lead down to 15 with under 15 seconds to play. Time out on the floor, and we'll take one with it. Team USA leading here in the first. Kevin Connors, Brad Pershillabak with you from Bilbao, Spain. Clay Thompson's three comes up short. Finland will try to beat the end of the first quarter clock, and it is last touched by the Finns. Team USA led just 11-8 early on in this one, but closed out the first quarter on a 20-8 run. Strong effort from the bench. And the U.S. off the Skaya Arena, where it's about 50-50 in terms of the fans rooting on Finland and Team USA. The U.S. a 31-16 lead. Kevin Connors, Fran for Schiller back with you. Not a textbook start to Team U for uh, to this game, Fran for Team USA, but they'll take the 15-point cushion after one. Yeah, they they've done some very good things. Their defense, in terms of guarding the three-point line, has been excellent. Finland 0 for 7. Irving, what a move in the paint, but he's unable to finish. Again, if you're Team USA, you're going to win this game, barring a major collapse. It's about staying focused on the things that you must improve on. And I'll go back to that example that Mike Krzyzewski gave me. It's like the regular season in the NBA, only in microcosm. <clears throat> now the push on Sean Huff. Uh, underneath the basket on the attempt as you take a look at the leading scores not surprisingly Eric Murphy leading the way for Finland Gerald Lee back His dad is the all-time leading scorer in Finland in the professional league His uncle Ronnie was a great player at Oregon And his uncle Russ was a first-round pick of the Milwaukee Bucks out of Marshall But that's a long time ago my friend well, he could use some of their fouls right now because uh, he has three. And again, uh, in FIBA play, just five fouls before you're disqualified. So he'll have to be prudent in his defense in this one. We talked about the objective, Fran, for Team USA, the hopes of, of getting better. What's the realistic objective for Finland in this game? Well, I think, you know, they're, they're in a pool, Pool C, which is not... A strong pool and it wouldn't shock me if Finland is the fourth team out of this pool you, know, you got the Dominican Republic you're competing with the Ukraine New Zealand so you know Finland is a team that got one of the four wild cards to the World Cup there was some controversy because they're the 39th ranked team in the world but if you think back to last year's Euro basket they beat Greece they beat Turkey, they beat Slovenia, they beat Russia. Now there's some other issues there about why they may have gotten an invite, but we can get into that as this game goes on. And we will as Steph Curry misfires on the three. It involves the smartphone application Angry Birds. And we'll talk about that uh, coming up here in just a bit as Newton in. This is the baseline jumper, and again, the U.S. looks to push something they've tried to do throughout this First half hardened off the dribble to travel and they get him for the extra steps see now James Harden is so good you're not going to stay in front of him but that's where he's got to drive it kick it so that someone else can drive it kick it make the defense play two sides of the floor and instead of settling for a good shot get yourself a great shot and you know friend that speaks to 
what this is about for the US NBA players as Irving goes all the way it's not just representing your country it's getting better as a player and that is a differentiator between the FIBA game the international game and the NBA well it is and, and also Kevin they don't have to run any plays and they're gonna beat all these teams in pool play but when you get to those final two games the defense they see from Spain and maybe Lithuania there's another travel it's gonna be tighter it's going to be more cohesive defensively. It's going to be harder to play one on one or one on two. Coach K knows that. He's experienced it. He's got to get his he's got to get his team to understand that even in a blowout game like this. Finland has gone ice cold uh, since a quality start. Missing 10 of its last 11 shots and again some of that maybe the pressure of the moment of a lot of that is the it's good defense. defense that's right There's no yeah. question yeah no it's really good defense you see how they kept they're downing Copenin and keeping him from using the ball screen that's vintage NBA sideline pick and roll defense Davis works back door on Medela and the easy lay in for Anthony Davis who in many ways Brad this could be a major league coming out party well he's been quiet tonight and only because they haven't needed him but he's been the best player on Team USA these first three weeks he is in the midst of getting ready to have a monster third season for the New Orleans Pelicans and what is so scary is the fact that he is still just 21 years old Davis showing off the entire arsenal well what he gives you he gives you the rubber band man defensive ability he, he's in two places at once on defense and then his offensive game is so much better than people gave him credit for coming out of college. Davis whistled for the foul on the drive by Tamu Raniko. Davis with eight points now. You know, you'll see, you see the drive here in the foul. John Calipari is so defensive of his Kentucky guys that sometimes I think people take what he says with a grain of salt. But he, but he told me during his freshman year, Anthony Davis, he said people have no idea how good an offensive player he's going to be at the next level. And last year was a great example, you know, averaging what he did, 22 and whatever it was, 11. And you're talking about Shaquille numbers at the same age. First player since the 99-2000 season to average 20 points and 10 rebounds in a season as Davis did last year and another opportunity for a three-point play and Davis may have started this game silently but Fran he is picking it up on the offensive end well he's taking it to Hano Meadow who's 37 38 years old former Utah Ute but Davis has gotten stronger his perimeter game is very good 17 and in he's tremendous on the defensive end yep. He is the next NBA superstar He's in, a, in a league of stars. Up to 11 points in this game. And you're right, Kevin Durant, in the weeks leading up to this tournament, called him an MVP caliber player. Mike Krzyzewski saying the separator between Davis and others, Fran, his unbelievable feet. Yeah, no, because he's a former point guard. You know, you talk about a 6'3 junior in high school is now, you know, heading towards seven feet with a 7'5 wingspan. Whistle and a foul on an incredulous Steph Curry. Again, you know, you just got to adjust. Steph Curry fouled out in the game against Puerto Rico. Uh, you know, he didn't really break a sweat. And he's just got to get used to the way the games are called. And sometimes on a night by night, quarter by quarter basis. Open it behind the back pass. Always great flair in international play as the three misfires. Metal of crashing the boards, but it's been mostly one and done for the Finns as Curry tries a three. Second effort by Fareed, but both he and Cousins fought for it and touched it last. You know what you love about that play? Great ball movement. You know, Curry, Harden, excuse me, it was Irving, Curry, Harden, and then both Cousins and Fareed crashed the backside and they got in each other's way, but the effort was great. Three-pointer by Hano Metala in and out. And the U.S. will push Curry ahead to a wide-open Boogie Cousins. 
Cousins coming off a dynamite season with the Sacramento Kings. 53 double-doubles last year. Average 22 and a half points, 11 and a half rebounds per game as he gobbles up another missed attempt by Finland. And a three by Kyrie Irving. That's the way you get out and run. Make the extra pass. Easy spot up three by Kyrie Irving. Rams releasing defensive end Michael Sam as they trim their roster. He'll be subject to waivers and according to our own Adam Schefter could be a prime practice squad player candidate. He's at the Missouri game today. More on the story coming up at the half as we send you back to more of USA and Finland with Kevin Connors and Fran Fraschilla. Gentlemen. All right guys so a major development in the NFL as we're back at Bilbao Spain. Kevin Connors, Fran Fraschilla. Team USA opening up now a 31-point lead as Rudy Gay finishes in transition. Started with excellent defense. They poked that ball loose. Off the dribble, wild attempt by Sasu Celine. And Team USA has come out of the gates. We've talked about the defense, Fran. That pressure has been there since the opening jump. You know what? It's been really good team pressure. It's not just on the ball pressure. It's a system that Tom Thibodeau put in. Coach K relinquished control of the defense as he normally does with the great staff he puts together. He's had guys like Jim Beheim by his side and Mike D'Antoni, Nate McMillan. Now he's got Tom Thibodeau and Monty Williams. Well, what Jerry Colangelo and his staff and Mike Krzyzewski and his staff have done in terms of making Team USA into the world superpower that it once was. We've talked about it so many times, friends, but it bears repeating the remarkable job that he's done getting, getting the superstar players to buy into being a part of the system. Yeah, there's no question. He, he is, uh, you know, to a man, watch how they keep the ball on the side and pick and roll as much as they can, but players love playing for him, and As the attempt by Renico is off the mark. More on that in just a minute. First, we remind you, Team USA takes the court again. Tomorrow, Sunday on ESPN, they'll play Turkey in another preliminary round game. USA Turkey, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. You were saying? Well, he said, hey, I don't coach against these guys during the NBA season, so they listen to me a little bit easier. Right, right. And he's got the incredible gravitas of being a Hall of Fame coach. That's a little bit of the nerves right there by Gerald Lee, the former Old Dominion Monarch all CAA player for Blaine Taylor went to the NCAA tournament I believe he, his team knocked off Notre Dame one year if I'm not mistaken I had a chance to speak uh, with one of the members of the uh, Finnish team I asked him this game today against the Team USA NBA superstars all over the roster I said I imagine this is the biggest sports story in all of Finland. He said it's one of them. He said the women's volleyball team is also playing very well. So sharing the spotlight with the women's volleyball team, but it shows the difference in priorities. With all he did on the court, Damien still found time for another event. He hosted his four bar Friday party in downtown New Orleans with eight contestants rapping with the crowd picking the winners. Now, speaking of rappers, one of my favorite. Put him in pick and rolls, not necessarily to his strengths. Um, Sacramento a little bit different. They ran a little bit more stuff for him. He took better shots. He shot 48% in Sacramento as opposed to 38% in Toronto. They're going to get a foul on Cousins posting up, and again, there's some confusion on a Team USA player after a foul call. See, and, and that's where Cousins, that's a good job by DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, befuddlement at the call. He made the temporary face, and then he realized, I'm not winning this argument. I'm just going to keep playing. There's some puzzlement on the part of Finland. They've yet to connect on a field goal here in the second quarter and an offensive foul called on Gerald Lee. And if it is, in fact, on Lee, that is number four. <laughs> a 
Fred, you, you often see the strange in international play, but I don't know that I've ever seen a player foul out in the first half. Have you? Uh, no, I can't. I cannot recall. <laughs> I've seen guys pick up five fouls in the second half. Watch out. Derek Rowe. Watch out. Like a hot knife through butter right down the key. And the USA lead is 55-18. You see how relentless that ball pressure is. Gay comes away with it. And again, the U.S. off to the races. DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan, who's just checked into the game will work his way to the free throw line. You know, he played his way on the team, Kevin, and what you love. Now watch watch Rose right here, the crossover. He just left Leto. How do we say that? Leto? But uh, you know his teammates love seeing this. Derek Rose playing himself back into condition, if you will. Well, you know the story about Derek Rose as DeRozan uh, this fires on the first attempt. He's played just 10 games over the past two NBA seasons. Surgery on both knees. He said earlier this summer, there are so many elements of a basketball game and competing that make me feel like I'm a hooper again. And when you think, Fran, that this is a former NBA MVP in the NBA, that's saying that, that's a remarkable statement. And, and interestingly, it was 2010 in the World Championships that really propelled him to that M MVP season in 11. Baseline jumper, and again, Finland has not made a field goal here in the second quarter. You know, getting back to DeMar DeRozan, that was a trade that really helped both teams because Rudy Gay went to Sacramento, finished up the year terrifically, and then DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, Valanchunas, all blossom came into their own because Rudy and his 20 shots were gone. So it worked out well for both teams. And the field goal shooting at this quarter clearly dominated by Team USA. Finland 0 for 15 from the floor as Mason uh, Plumley checks into the game for the first time for Team USA. For some, I think for most, a big surprise that he made this team. But he really played his way onto this team, Fred, quite literally. Well, he was on the select team, which usually is that group of young NBA players that scrimmage against the national team. Played so well the first day, they needed a 20th body so they could scrimmage on both courts at the same time. And you are exactly correct, Kevin. He played himself onto the team because of his energy and his defense. That's great pick and roll coverage right there. DeRozan gets his hand in the passing lane, and rightly so, last touched by Finland is the call by the officials. They are not letting the ball handlers on Finland get to the middle of the floor in pick and roll by keeping them on the sideline. This is Clay Thompson. Drops it off for Rose, high off the glass. Fought for, good effort down low by Cousins. And it's Murphy who comes away with it. Three on the way by Murphy, and gobbled up by Boogie. Under a minute to go here in the first half from Bilbao, Spain. Thoroughly dominating second quarter by Team USA. Nice feed from Cousins. And Plumley is able to finish it off. Not much to complain about at halftime in the locker room if you're the USA coaching staff. But it has been a, very much about their great defense. USA pushing again. Thompson throws it down. And the U.S. lead is up to 42. Finland has been held to a pair of free throws here in the second quarter. The Team USA defense has been suffocating. Free throw line jumper by Murphy is off the mark. And barring a turnover and a miracle shot, Finland will go the second quarter, Fran, without converting a field goal. Doesn't happen very often, I can tell you that. But uh, give Team USA 
credit their pressure has been relentless both on the perimeter and at the bucket as they get it into Rose a chance to beat the buzzer instead he's whistled and called for a travel I don't get that one he was dribbling the ball already where did they come up with that coach K saying he's already dribbling it I'm not sure the officials have seen that kind of quickness maybe they thought that that has happened that's a great point as DeRozan turns it over and a chance to beat the buzzer, it does not happen. But that is about the only thing that did not go well for Team USA in that second quarter. They outscore Finland 29 to 2. They hold the Wolfpack to two points. No field goals in the second quarter. A dominating first half for Team USA. We're at the half. It's the U.S. a 60 to 18 lead. Kevin Connors, Brad Prashilovac with you in Bilbao, Spain. Team USA, the 60 to 18 halftime lead. Bob Holtzman moments ago caught up with one of the many stars of the U.S., James Harden. James, 29 to 2 in the second quarter. Pretty impressive. What worked defensively for you guys? Uh, our, our aggressiveness. You know, we had a pretty good first quarter, but we felt like we can go to another level. And uh, you know, we talked about it. We preach it every day. And uh, guys just got out there off the defensive end and uh, offensively. We got on transition. Looked like you did something to your right hand when you stole the ball and, and made that layup. What happened? I just sprained it, but I'm good. I'm good. See you in the second half. Appreciate it. All right, so James, uh, James Harden with our Bob Holtzman. And Fran, as you pour over the first half stats, what jumps off the page to you other than the score? Well, I mean, the turnovers because of the pressure defense by Team USA and the way they contested shots. It was a, uh, an incredible defensive performance. And when you guard the way they can guard, your offense then takes over because they're tremendous in the open court. Uh, you know, you'll see the lobs, the athletic plays. That's Team USA, but it's all keyed by the great defense. Well, Finland kept it mildly interesting in the early going. It was an 11-8 game before the floodgates really opened up. The U.S. pushing the tempo, taking advantage, as Fran talked about. Uh, defensive plays leading to fast breaks and it's a big reason why they held Finland without a field goal in the second quarter en route to a 42 point halftime lead so in all seriousness what does a coach say to his team when they're leading a game by 42 at the half there were a couple of occasions in my career I had a lead like this right. and coach K has had many of these kind of leads and the big thing now and I mean this sincerely do not play the scoreboard and at least for the third quarter we still want to go out and try to dominate this team regardless of the score because you're trying to play for the next two weeks and not for the next 20 minutes good example right there work on your execution keep your intensity up and he'll call the dogs off at a certain point in the fourth quarter the only team usa player that we did not see in that first half was Andre Drummond 11 players getting into the game for Team USA they've spread the wealth offensively as uh, Fareed gets a hand on it kept alive by Eric Murphy now if you're Finland and your coach Detman it's let's just go back and try to get better in the second half maybe we cut the lead down but let's get better because we still have a chance to do some things in pool play. Well, there it is, the end of a long drought after 19 misses in a row from the field. Tuko Gatti gets one to go for Finland. First field goal since the closing seconds of the first quarter. 2-3 zone by Finland. They'll match up out of this. This is actually good for Team USA. Baseline jump. Yep. What a shot. And he has just got a good looking shot, Anthony Davis. Let me tell you something. You look at his numbers from the NBA season 17 feet and in. He's in that 45%, 50% shooting range. He's a good mid range shooter. Steph Curry's got to keep himself on the court. Good ball movement. That was the first play of the second half. And then they attack the 2 3 zone very easily with Davis on the baseline. If I'm Coach K, I hope they play some zone. Why? Because teams are going to zone USA. Despite the shooting, right. they will try to change up and find a defense that can work. Because most nights, Kevin, 
it's not going to be man to man. Well, that is one of, in my opinion, and I think yours as well, that's one of the big differences between this version of Team USA. Years past, you had the Carmelo Anthony's, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant's, guys who had the ability to take you off the dribble. This version of Team USA has so many good shooters, something that's really been lacking in the past. No, there's no question. They built this team for international play. And let me tell you something. I think it was Anthony Davis that batted that ball off the rim. That wouldn't have happened 10 years ago because these guys played so little FIBA basketball, they didn't understand the rules. Murphy double teamed and good composure that time to drop in the jump hook. Eric Murphy, we mentioned, trying to make the Cleveland Cavaliers. So this is a big second half for him, playing against his peers. And a potential future teammate, Kyrie Irving. Gorgeous move off the dribble. Uh, for a guy who's going to be playing now alongside LeBron James, Mike Miller, Kevin Love, potentially Ray Allen as the U.S. pushes. Unselfishness, hard and misses, but it's Anthony Davis running the floor. Four guys touch the ball on that play in a matter of four seconds. That's what we're talking about. Make the extra pass. I feel bad for Copenin because he can't do what he can do as a point guard on this team. Off the dribble, it's Copenin missing that time. He's not a great prospect, but he can play in the league. And you see good sportsmanship there. They call the foul on uh, Godi on Anthony Davis, but he extends his hand and his shake hands. And again, the creativeness of Team USA in the open floor. Yeah, they've been devastating when they've used that opportunity to steal the ball and get out and run. Now he had Fareed open, and he may have missed him. Uh, that's going to be over and back. Dynamite atmosphere. Even he won't help today. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, they could use it, Brad. He, he can turn wine into water, but he can't make up a 50-point lead. <laughs> the light of the game right there as a whistle with a foul on. Uh, oh, team, team USA. Water into wine, That's I right, should yeah. say, but he can do both, I guess. <laughs> Stoic. Right now he's thinking, man, we're playing really well. I'm telling you, that's what he's thinking. Well, again, we highlighted some of them in the first half. Nice looking move by Sean Huff up and under yep. Anthony Davis. But we highlighted, listen, we all know the superstars on Team USA, and this roster is arguably the best of this entire tournament right top to bottom there are yeah NBA there's stars. no question they got 12 nba players spain has you know eight or nine that have played in the league or in the league but by the way the spain lead a 14 point lead right now as irving looks to keep it alive he tried to get the timeout uh, but he touched uh, uh, the end line right there spain a 14 point lead on iran right now but you're right, Fran. I mean, we, we mentioned the stars on Team USA, but, but that Spain team with the stars that they have with both yes. Powell and Marcus Gasol and Serge Ibaka, Ricky Rubio, and the fact that they're playing this tournament yes. on their home soil. Listen, it's a one-and-done game. If they get to the gold medal game, it's one-and-done. It's not best of five or best of seven. And basically, that Spanish team is intact for the last six years as the Providence Friar fans are going to be excited. But you know this. We've talked about it. That team that Kobe, LeBron, Carmelo actually struggle with, that's the same team that this youngest USA team, since they put NBA guys in these tournaments, is going to be going up against. So one and done, anything can happen. It is the youngest uh, Team USA squad. Since NBA players have been a part of it. Average age just over 24 years old as the three goes down by Copenin. Davis on the drive, uh, fouled on his way up. 
by Eric Murphy and Fran. We've been talking about the firepower on Spain. Yeah, and let me let me let me tell you now, Ricky Rubio is not even close to their best guard. Now, I mean, there are people that think Fernandez, Rodriguez, Calderon, Navarro are all more important to that team than Ricky Rubio. And we got Ricky Rubio as a potential star in the NBA. He's just a role player on that team. You cannot play the Gasols and Obaka together, but that trio at the four and five is pretty good. You know, Spain would be a good playoff team in the NBA. Not a great one, but they would be in the playoffs for sure. As Davis knocks down the first, well, we've done so many of these international games together, and one of the things that you brought to my attention is the fact that not everyone on all of these rosters, the goal for everyone is not to play in the NBA. Some guys are content with playing in their own countries, like some are the guards on Spain. Exactly. Rudy Fernandez was never happy in the NBA. Rodriguez, Sergio Rodriguez, could play in the NBA right now. He just came over when he was too young. And Navarro could play in the NBA in his prime. Obviously, Calderon is very good. Sergio Yule could play in the NBA, another guard. It's a good quality team. That's going to be a heck of a matchup if they both get there. Three-pointer on the way by Sean Huff. And Finland, Fred, whatever was said at the half, they're playing better in the third quarter. They are. And if you're a Valparaiso Crusader fan, you got to be thrilled because Sean Huff and Australia's Ryan Brokoff are both starting in the FIBA World Cup. How cool is that for that little school coached by Bryce Drew up in Northwestern Indiana? Well, Finland is actually outscoring the U.S. 14 to 12 here in the third quarter after not connecting on a field goal in the entire second quarter. Here's Derek Rose into the paint. No, but he works his way to the free throw line. And a reminder that Sunday, the heat is on in Atlanta. 43 drivers battle, 16 advance, two races to go until the playoffs. The Oral B USA 500 in Atlanta, Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Also available live on Watch ESPN. And by the way, Tony Stewart will, in fact, race in that race tomorrow night. I've been on both sides of this score and both coaches are all you want you all you want to do now is your team you just want them to improve. Finland's got to put this game behind them. They got four more in pool play. It's not a strong pool. And for Team USA you must maintain your focus and intensity. It is the 75th anniversary of the Finnish Basketball Federation, and it's a nation, uh, Fran, that has made a great push to make great strides in the game of basketball as Clay Thompson drills a wide-open three. And you talked about a 39th-ranked team in the world, but then being a part of this tournament is about as big as it gets right now for the development of basketball in that country. Oh, I agree, and you could, you could tell by the fan support in the arena how much they love this team. Jump hook, no. Second effort by Foranen, and it's last touched by Team USA. I always said that's an era of commission that you can live with as a coach. Two guys going after it, knocking it out of bounds. Rather make errors of commission than errors of omission. Well, we, you know, we touched on it a bit in the first half, speaking further about uh, the Finnish basketball team. And if you at home, have ever downloaded the app Angry Birds, you have helped get Finland to the FIBA World Cup. You want to explain that? I had to check with my sons about this, right? Right, right. But the, uh, the company is uh, Rovio. Rovio. And they are, you know, they're, they offer to sponsor a lot of the FIBA World Cup if and when Finland was chosen as a wild card. Well, Turkey, Greece, Brazil, and Finland are the wild cards. And it worked out well for the Finland Wolfpack. And by sponsor, big money. Big money we're talking about, not only to get Finland literally to this tournament, but there's been some speculation that, that perhaps some money has changed hands to what? get Finland in the big tournament. Big money in FIBA? Perhaps. Big money in FIFA? 
You don't say, right, as Clay Thompson drills another one. Clay Thompson, he's been pretty quiet today. But we talked about he's guarding Copenhagen right now. No, he's not. I thought he was, but he's a really good defender. As they get Cousins on the reach in foul. Another look at Thompson and the ability to catch and shoot and the number of players, Fran, as we talked about, that have that ability to knock down the outside yes. shot. Well, it's been an important part of, you know, I think the uh, understanding of the FIBA game because U.S. teams were zoned so much in the past and we collected a bunch of athletes who didn't really know how to play the game. A whistle and a foul on the floor. Now, I've got a question that's right up your alley. The number of American shooters that are now in the NBA and at the uh, fingertips of Mike Krzyzewski as we get another look at the, the whistle and the foul on DeMar DeRozan. Is that just the evolution of the game or is it a product of the international game and how the game has changed as a whole? Well, it's, it's a good question. I, I, here's what I noticed about six, seven, eight years ago. The Kevin Durant's, the Kevin Loves, you know, the not, no, not so much Derrick Rose because he's more of a open court guy, but I do think the game is evolving back to where skill is more important than it was for a number of years for basketball at the grassroots level. It's not just about athleticism anymore. Steph Curry's another example. There are guys that are coming up the ranks now that understand that skill level is important and not just how high you can jump and whether your dunks get on Sports Center. That's been good for the American game in recent years. And I think Team USA has had a lot to do with that. Not just at the men's national team level as the three is off the mark, but Cousins battles for the rebound and lays it back up and in. Not just at the men's national team level, but really it's been pervasive throughout USA basketball. Well, you'd hope so, because it's how the game should be played. The combination of skill and athleticism. Another turnover by the Finns as Derrick Rose pushes it right down the paint, misses the layup in transition. But it's taken away, and Rudy Gay misses a close one. And it'll stay Team USA basketball. Rudy claimed he got fouled. Half the arena is saying you're up 49. Right. But he's competing. He was at practice in Las Vegas as a spectator, just watching, talking to the coaching staff, having a good time, probably not ever thinking that he would get a chance to come out here. Good job by DeMarcus Cousins right there, an obvious foul. Somewhat intentional. Lee gets his money's worth. And DeMarcus did not overreact. Right. And that, that's something that has has to have been emphasized by Mike Krzyzewski as Lee does in fact foul out. He had four fouls in that first half. Cousins to the free throw line. Just to finish the point on the success of USA basketball, I had a chance to chat with uh, uh, Jim Tooley, the CEO of uh, USA basketball in the Bahamas. And one of the things that, that he was proudest of, not just the FIBA championship for Team USA in 2010 and the Olympic gold medals, but the fact that at every level of USA basketball, Fran, Team USA is number one in the world. Well, it started with the team in 2006, and then 2008, Coach K, Jerry Colangelo taking over. There's a system now in place. Uh, it's not perfect, but we now have a lot of young players at the high school level competing for the USA, understanding rules, understanding, you know, the differences in the game. It started with this guy, obviously. Um, it's worked out really well. There's a next generation coming up that understand the rules and also understand the pride you need to have in representing your country. That's a good thing. As the first free throw is knocked down by Huff, we've talked so, so much over the years about Mike Krzyzewski and his success at Duke and with Team USA. In your opinion, as a, a former college coach, what is his greatest strength? Well, he's got so many. You know, he does. I mean, he, 
He's obviously a great teacher. He knows the game really well. But I've always said, I think the way he manages his people, you know, it's not easy, whether you're at the college or the NBA level, managing egos, managing expectations. He's a guy, because of his background at West Point, playing for Bob Knight, all the experiences at Duke, he could be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company very easily. So it's not just about what he brings to his team on the court every day. It's how he develops people. And uh, it's obvious how he gets these guys to buy in. And by the way, these guys have a few egos. How about what he's done with DeMarcus Cousins? Now, Cousins himself deserves a lot of credit for sure. buying in and wanting to be a part of this team. But as we talked about in the first half, this was a guy two years ago that almost drove Jerry Colangelo crazy. Well, and he's come a long way, there's no doubt. But I'd say it's even more important how he's managed guys like LeBron and KD and Carmelo. You know, three of the greatest players in the world. You know, in the NBA, it's a player's league. Players dictate oftentimes who's coaching them. But they all trust Coach K on this team. By the way, he keeps in touch with them 12 months a year. Yeah. DeRozan misfires the three. USA going with a lineup of Cousins, DeRozan, Rose, Gay, and Thompson as Cousins fights for it, comes away with it. I love to see Finland play a little bit of zone. Here's Clay Thompson, open look at a three, and Clay Thompson drills it. He's got 15 points in this game. That's a drink of water compared to that NBA line. Curry and Thompson made almost 500 threes a year ago. Curry was one in the NBA and three-point field goals made. Thompson was two as they get Ahano Medela on the foul. Actually, I take that back. It's a Corvisto called for the foul. Visto, another one of those guys that spent some time in the United States. He played his basketball in high school in Virginia. And then he was a UNC Greensboro Spartan. You like how I do their nickname? Very nice. I think he played for Mike Dement, if I'm not mistaken. As DeRozan knocks down the free throw, a guy who does get to the free throw line. He was fourth in the NBA in total free throws made a season ago. Player he's, really developed Fred in, in, in his first few years in the NBA. He's come a long way. He's, he's one of those guys that really was just an athlete after one year at USC, but he's a great kid. He, he's uh, he's still in the infancy of his development, but he put that Raptor team on his back much of the second half of the year and got them into the playoffs. Three-pointer, a quick trigger, and it's Caponin who drills it. But Terry Caponin. Top player on this finished team starting to get going here in the third quarter. As it's gay behind a screen, it doesn't go down. Strong comeback by Finland in that third quarter to make 16 advance, two races to go till the playoffs. And we also remind you that it's Team USA taking on Turkey tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN as our coverage of the FIBA World Cup continues. Kevin Connors. Brad Priscilla, despite a third quarter in which Finland shot 7 of 16 and scored 21 points, the U.S. lead is still 50. You get a heavy dose of Andre Drummond and Mason Plumley in this fourth quarter. DeMar DeRozan, of course. The right Drummond in the game for the first time, defending the attempt by Hano Medela that goes down. And if the name is familiar, we've mentioned it throughout the broadcast, played his college ball friend at Utah back in the 90s. He sure did. Played on the Final Four team that the late Nick Rick Majerus coached in 1998 that came within, oh, just a couple minutes of beating Kentucky. Andre Miller was on that team, Mike Doliak. This is good to see. Copenin is a very good player. And again, and no, no disrespect to his teammates, but when you're the point guard on a team that's undermanned, it's really hard to show what you can do. Clay Thompson too strong on the three. Copenhagen's played much better 
In the second half, his right's controlled by the Mavericks. What a feed down low, but it, and Murphy could not get his hands on that one. As Ronico tried the fancy, and it didn't happen. You know, we talked about the DeMar DeRozan and a player who's developed in the NBA and really playing for Team USA, an outstanding opportunity for him to continue to develop. And there's been some talk, Fran, especially after the Paul George injury, about whether or not NBA players should be playing for Team USA. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I, here's how I feel. If you're in a contract year, you're in the middle of a trade, you played a lot of basketball for Team USA like Kevin Durant has. Do your thing. Take the summer off. But this has been proven. Playing in the summer has actually helped these guys develop. Derrick Rose, Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, Kevin Love all had career seasons after they won the World Championships in 2010. So that's why there's a pool of 20 or so players that can represent the United States because you're not going to get LeBron every year or you may suffer a tragic injury to Paul George but by and large this is good for these guys and by the way let's say hello to our guy Paul George who's right. probably watching because I know he wants to be on that team that's going to Rio de Janeiro in 2016 and there's a good chance he will be. And I, you know, one of the one of the silly FIBA rules is that Team USA was not allowed to wear the shooting shirts uh, that they wore in the, the exhibition games leading up to this tournament that, that had the message of getting well for Paul George and that they had Paul George on their minds. And, and obviously, uh, we, we hated to see the injury that occurred to George, and we wish him a uh, speedy recovery. And I look forward to seeing him back on the basketball court. And again, to finish the point about NBA players playing uh, for Team USA and internationally, Mark Cuban, the Mavericks owner, one of the people who's been very vocal about that not being the case. He says these guys are multi-million dollar investments the teams make, and it's an injury risk, and they don't get any reward financially for playing in these international competitions. That's the other side yes. of the argument. And, and it's, you, know, you understand it because he's a businessman. Right. Um, and, and I think Mark's argument is more about if somebody's going to be making the money, why is it FIBA and not the NBA? And that discussion will come up in the fall at the board. You know, whenever uh, Adam Silver has his board of governors meeting or owners meetings, I guarantee you that will be part of the discussion. But as far as this outlet to play in the summertime, I think this is great. You know, in the NFL, they don't play 11 on 11 in the offseason. But somewhere in Houston, L.A., New York, Chicago, these guys are playing five on five. And they're going to play anyway. This vehicle is tremendous, in my opinion. And it goes without saying, it's tremendous for some guys who are looking to get on the r radar of NBA teams. Not that uh, Copenhagen is not. He's a property of the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban's team. And he's played very well here in the second half. And Terry Copenhagen, he's got 12 points on five of nine shooting in this game. Yeah, if he's 26 years old. He's got one more year left on his contract. And I have a feeling talking to people, he'd love to come over. He's what we would call, as another rebound, by the way, by Cousins. Who's, I think it was Drummond. That oh, it was Drummond. You're right. My fault. But uh, this, is, you know, it's a good piece of the puzzle for him because Dallas can do what they want with him a year from now. Another turnover forced by the U.S. Rose drops it off. Plumley in transition. Nicely done with the left hand. You know, from the start of training camp, that's what he does. Plays with energy. You don't need an all-star team. You're trying to build a team in three weeks. And that's what he is. He's a role player. Three on the way by Leto. Kept alive and good second effort by Monty Newton. Kyrie Irving the other way. Another nifty left-handed shot. And Team USA hits the 99 mark. I think Irving and Davis have been as consistent as anybody on Team USA from day one. Training camp, exhibition games. Rudy Gay as the U.S. goes over 100. 101-49.
You know, Jim Beheim's on that staff for a lot of reasons, partly because he's a Hall of Fame coach, but he's also the, the architect of the 2-3 zone. So why the heck don't they play a little zone right now, you know? So but, you, uh, you want Team USA to play some zone. <laughs> exactly. And I'm, I'm just giving Jim a hard time because he's got to have got to have something to do with the team instead of being Coach K's best friend. Irving drops it off. Drummond has a chance to finish off a three-point play. Well, Sunday, the Heat is on in Atlanta. 43 drivers battle. 16 advance. Two races to go into the playoffs. The Oral-B USA 500 in Atlanta Sunday, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Also available live on Watch ESPN. Is there, Fred, we we're a little tongue-in-cheek here with the 2-3 zone, but is there a, a scenario where Team USA might want to play 2-3? You know, I don't see it because I, I think Coach K doesn't really believe in it. And I used to use this analogy. The zone is a curveball to your fastball. Man-to-man's your fastball. He's got a 99-mile-an-hour fastball right, right now, so he doesn't need the curveball. Now, when you talk about Jim Beheim's zone during the Syracuse season, that's like Mariano Rivera's cutter. Right. He can throw that every single time and get people out. I just don't think Coach K believes in the 2-3 zone as much as Jim does. And I bet with this team, Jim doesn't believe in it. So I don't think there's much reason to play it. Gay has it batted away. It'll stay USA ball. Well, from the experience that I had in the Bahamas with calling the games for uh, Kentucky on ESPNU. It's something John Calipari says he's going to at least consider with uh, the, the players he has on his team. And, and he's a guy who has played primarily man-to-man. -man. As Derek Rose drills a three, I guess it's situational, right? I guess it's depending on the roster makeup yeah. that you have. And, and John's got a very tall athletic team. They would be a great zone team except for the fact that they could be a great man-to-man -man team, right, too. Yeah. We know this. They're going to be a great team. Yes, they are. Regardless, they are loaded. There's Sean Huff giving it his all. He had a good career at Valpo, played in the NCAA tournament. Graduated in 2008. His dad is from the Chicago area, Alton, Illinois. As you see, Rudy Gay head to the bench for Team USA. And DeMar DeRozan checked back in. You notice good minutes for Derrick Rose out there. Oh, an easy layup attempt by Cody. Oh, Missed the cheap one. And he'll head to the free throw line. Fred, we look at the pool C here of which uh, Team USA is a member. Luckily. Luckily, that's right, and that's well, one of the major advantages, right? That don't well, they deserve the it. They're the number one seed in the, in the tournament. But is there another team that, that, that can even challenge them here in pool play? Uh, I don't see it. I really don't. Um, Turkey's got a veteran team. They'll see them tomorrow. Turkey has not played well this last month. You know, I don't I don't really see it. Mike, Mike uh, Fratello's got a nice club with the Ukraine. I, I just, uh, no. I just don't see it. They may have a half where they're up seven or eight, nine, but I'd be surprised if anybody's within 15 in pool play, quite frankly. Here's Plumley along the baseline. Strong move by Mason Plumley. Let me tell you something. If you're Billy King in the Nets, you got to be loving the confidence that Mason Plumley is getting starting on in late July at training camp. He came off a solid rookie season. He was a member of the all-rookie team, Mason Plumley, as Renico is uh, fouled shooting the three. But you're right, and if, for those who are just joining us, for the benefit of those who were not watching in the first half, Fran, we talked about it, a guy who, who literally played himself onto this team. And it was fortunate because they've had some guys defect you know, they're concerned about having enough big guys. I think that's been answered the way Cousins, Fareed, Davis have played. And then you throw Plumlee and Drummond in the mix. 
And it's because of Spain. We know that. You know, it's like when you play in football against a great defensive line, you like to have a couple extra offensive linemen, and that's what they've got. One hundred nine fifty-two in a game that was really only in doubt for the first five minutes of this game. Team USA led 11-8. They held Finland without a field goal in the second quarter, led this one 60 to 18 at the half, and a whistle and a foul going against the Finns. Well, it is the first college football Saturday of the season, and we remind you tonight, ABC Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo, Jameis Winston and the number one Florida State Seminoles defend their BCS championship in the new playoff era. They take on Oklahoma State in the Cowboy Classic 8 Eastern on ABC. Hard to see the Seminoles, quite frankly, losing a regular season game with the accumulation of talent they have at virtually every position. Hey, there's some interesting storylines, however, you know, in this pool. The Ukraine will have a young man by the name of Svi Mikhailuk, who's 17 years old. He made the national team. As soon as he's done with Mike Fratello's team, he's going to fly to Lawrence, Kansas, and play for Bill Self this year. And he'll be one of the youngest players in the Big 12. Maybe the youngest. Three pointer off the mark by Coivisto. Well, you got a chance to see Carl Towns uh, with the Dominican Republic team as Thompson drills another three. Now, Towns is not a part of the Dominican team in this tournament, but he did play with them. I had the exhibition series, and he's headed to Kentucky for John Calipari. Yes, he, he's another one of those guys who's going to have a terrific rookie year if John Calipari could find some playing time right. for him. But no, seriously, he's he's likely to be a top five pick a year from now. Good kid, good family. You know, not as tall as advertised. I think he's about 6'10", 6'11". But. Uh, Drummond with a defensive play and he runs the floor and he's rewarded by DeMar DeRozan. And he's rewarded because he's going to be one of Team USA's big guys of the future. And I think that's why he's on this team. He's, he's got, got enormous potential. And he's got nine points, Brad, and limited action here. Well, you're talking about a 13-13 guy last year at 20 years of age. Well, DeRozan gave it up to Drummond last possession. This time it's Drummond to DeRozan who misses on the three as we head under a minute in this one, dominated by Team USA as we expected. A turnover by Kaponen and a wry smile from the finish star. Uh, he's trying to play pick and roll against four white shirts. There's nowhere to go. Good team defense. And how about the ovation by this Finnish crowd? We mentioned early on they traveled strong. There's about 40,000 uh, Finns living in Spain. They brought about 8,000 Finns with them to this FIBA tournament, about as big as it gets for Finnish basketball. Well, they said last person out of Helsinki, turn out the lights. <laughs> we'll be back in two weeks. That's right. Maybe sooner. But they do have a chance to get out of pool play. Three on the way by Huff. And a good opportunity for the many who made it here to Bilbao, Spain uh, to celebrate. They knew what they were up against coming into this game. As so many nations do in pool play against Mighty Team USA, who despite playing without uh, the super, super, superstars, has enjoyed domination throughout this game. 114 to 55. As the clock winds down and the clock runs out on this one from this guy arena standing ovation from those who watched it saluting the Finnish team uh, for their effort and obviously for Team USA the 114 to 55 dominating win as they open uh, the FIBA World Cup of basketball Fran in decisive style well I think coach K was looking for great pressure defense which he got I, I thought the ball movement early in the game was excellent. And you know what? 
just what I we expected to happen Kevin but give Finland credit this crowd is amazing they're still cheering their team it's a big deal for them and uh, now they move on to tomorrow a day off on Monday and three more games in pool play during the middle of the week. Now, Team USA will take on Turkey tomorrow. We're going to come back and put a bow on this one today. A 114-55 win over Finland. We're coming back to wrap it up after this. Domination from the very get-go in this one. Team USA opening its run at the 2014 FIBA World Cup. A 114-55 win over Finland. Clay Thompson led the way with 18 points, Fran, but it was a total team effort on both ends of the floor for Mike Krzyzewski's Team USA. Well, he got a chance to use his depth, which he has a lot of, and it started at the beginning with guys like Harden and Davis, and it continued. A lot of great performances, but James Harden outstanding early. He attacks the rim as good as anybody in this tournament, anybody in the world, really, and uh, he got it going. Anthony Davis outstanding as well. We saw glimpses of brilliance from Davis tonight. They didn't need him to get 25 points. When called on, they both stepped up. They didn't need him to get 25, but he got 17 on six of eight shooting, four rebounds. A major defensive presence for Team USA. Again, Clay Thompson led the way with 18 points. Boogie Cousins with 10 rebounds for the U.S., who will take on Turkey tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. <laughs> New Zealand, the Dominican Republic, and the Ukraine round out Pool C play. Turkey's got eight or nine guys that have, were on that team that played Team USA in the finals in Istanbul, and they finished second in the world that year. Veteran team, they're not playing well. Omer Asik, who will play for the Pelicans this year, did not play very much today, was in foul trouble early, matchups. Uh, he's got he's to produce tomorrow for Turkey. Now, the U.S. shoots it at 58% from the floor. They hold Finland to 28% shooting from the field. Outscore the Finns 29-2 in the second quarter en route to the big win. You've been watching USA Basketball. Once again, the final score, 114-55. Up next, college football studio highlights. And for Fran Fraschilla and our entire team, I'm Kevin Connors. This has been... Domination from the very get-go in this one. Team USA opening its run at the 2014 FIBA World Cup. A 114-55 win over Finland. Clay Thompson led the way with 18 points, Fran, but it was a total team effort on both ends of the floor for Mike Krzyzewski's Team USA. Well, he got a chance to use his depth, which he has a lot of, and it started at the beginning with guys like Harden and Davis, and it continued. A lot of great performances, but James Harden outstanding early. He attacks the rim as good as anybody in this tournament, anybody in the world, really, and uh, he got it going. Anthony Davis outstanding as well. We saw glimpses of brilliance from Davis tonight. They didn't need him to get 25 points. When called on, they both stepped up. They didn't need him to get 25, but he got 17 on six of eight shooting, four rebounds. A major defensive presence for Team USA. Again, Clay Thompson led the way with 18 points. Boogie Cousins with 10 rebounds for the U.S., who will take on Turkey tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. <laughs> New Zealand, the Dominican Republic, and the Ukraine round out Pool C play. Turkey's got eight or nine guys that have, were on that team that played Team USA in the finals in Istanbul, and they finished second in the world that year. Veteran team, they're not playing well. Omer Asik, who will play for the Pelicans this year, did not play very much today, was in foul trouble early, matchups. Uh, he's got he's to produce tomorrow for Turkey. Now, the U.S. shoots it at 58% from the floor. They hold Finland to 28% shooting from the field. Outscore the Finns 29-2 in the second quarter en route to the big win. You've been watching USA Basketball. Once again, the final score, 114-55. Up next, college football studio highlights. And for Fran Fraschilla and our entire team,